So we have an object on a spring and I'm gonna compress my spring and I'm gonna allow, and I'm gonna release it. And I'm gonna allow the energy to go up. And we wanna determine two things. We wanna determine the spring constant of the spring. And we wanna determine the, the, this velocity of the ball as our spring goes to its zero stretch. So what this is telling us is we've got a few things that we've, that we've got given information. We've been able to measure the maximum height. And so we've got that. We've been given the mass of our object. And this time we're gonna have to use the mass of our object. It is a little different than the previous problem, but we're gonna have to use it. But what we know is we know that the total energy of the spring we're gonna assume that we're gonna not lose any energy due to heat or friction or resistance or anything like that, is gonna equal the total energy given to the ball and that's gonna be the case when the ball leaves our spring. So this is gonna be the total energy given to the ball is when x is going to equal zero or there's no stretch in the spring and that's going to equal the total energy at the top. So we're going to be able to get all of those pieces there. So if I want the potential energy of the spring, that's going to equal one half kx squared, my kinetic energy, once my ball leaves the spot, it's going to have, it's only going to have kinetic energy at that point. And this is kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And this is going to equal the total energy when our x is equal to zero. And we're gonna have our potential energy due to position. Is equal to MGH and that one we can calculate right away because we're told that this is 0 0.100 kilograms. We know our acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're told from the problem that the ball reaches a height of 16 meters. So we've got that in there. So we can actually do that calculation. So I'm gonna take my 0.1 times my 9.81 times my 16. And that tells me I've got 15.7 joules. Because I have a kilogram meter per second squared, which is equal to a Newton times meters, and a Newton meter is a joule. So my units all work out. So if I wanna know the spring constant, I'm gonna have that one point or one half kx squared has gotta equal my potential energy due to position. And K is going to equal two times that potential energy divided by X squared. And so it's going to be two times 15.7. And we're got kilograms meters squared. Second squared divided by X, which is 0 0.2 meters squared. All right. So my units for my, my spring constant are gonna be in this weird units of kilograms per second, but that's the way it is. So I'm gonna just do that. 
So now I'm going to get two, oh, I'm going to multiply that by two divided by 0.2 squared. And my spring constant is going to be like 784 kilogram seconds. Or you could, you know, there's a couple of other things that you could have it. It could be Newton meters. That's another common one. And we could play with those, but that gives us our spring constant. And finally, we can do the kinetic energy. And my kinetic energy is going to leave me my one half mv squared is equal to my 15.7 joules. So my v squared is going to equal two times my 15.7 divided by the mass, and we're told that the mass is 0.1. So now I've got a number that looks like 0.1. Gives me 314, and my velocity is going to equal 17.7 meters per second. So this problem is very similar to your rifle problem that you have in your homework, but we've worked through it to get a variety of different things just by using conservation of energy.